called him Mr. Fox. He had a head of thick red hair and a red mustache that curled at both ends. And he lived in a house deep, deep in the woods. Mr. Fox was gallant. Mr. Fox was wealthy. Mr. Fox was handsome. And Mr. Fox was very, very mysterious. And as was customary for this place and time, Mr. Fox every Sunday would ride his jet black horse down to the village. And there he would court the young ladies who were eligible for marriage. Now, as you can imagine, with someone with Mr. Fox's fine looks, wealth, gallantry, and mystery about him, Mr. Fox was a very popular suitor. But of all the young ladies Mr. Fox would visit, of all the young ladies he courted, the one who fancied him most was a Lady Mary. And Lady Mary was young and Lady Mary was fair. She had four brothers and more admirers than she could count. And on these Sunday afternoons, Lady Mary would see Mr. Fox in her garden out back of her cottage. One of her four brothers would always be there as a chaperone, as was proper. You see, Lady Mary's mother and father had both passed away. And Mr. Fox and Lady Mary would sit there out in the garden and they would have tea and they would eat cake and talk of all the matters of the day. And after a while, after a while, Lady Mary came to care for Mr. Fox more than any other that she would see. You see, Mr. Fox was different from the other young men who would come to court Lady Mary. Mr. Fox had been to faraway lands. He knew different people. He, he spoke strange languages. And he was mysterious. And after a while, Lady Mary's heart belonged to him alone. And on one of these fine Sunday afternoons, while they were sitting in the garden drinking tea, Mr. Fox turned to Lady Mary and said, Lady Mary, I imagine that once we are married, you shall live with me in my home. I have a very fine house. You will be most comfortable there. And Lady Mary replied, Why, Mr. Fox, but I don't believe I know where you live. I, I don't think anyone in the village knows where you live. Why, I am a very private person. I do keep myself to myself, but it's really no secret. I live in a house, you see, deep in the woods. Ah, said Lady Mary, that's why none of us here in the village ever venture into those woods. Why? I don't know why not. They're a, they're a lovely place to live. One day I will take you into the woods and you will visit my home. Well, that day never came. But on one Sunday afternoon, when Mr. Fox said, he was away on business, and the four brothers were out on a hunting trip, Lady Mary decided to go picking some flowers on the edge of that, that forest. And as she picked these lovely flowers, she got carried away and started wandering deeper and deeper down the path into the woods. And after a while, she was far, far into them. And as she wandered about, she she eventually came to this wide open clearing. And in that clearing, there was a grand house. Why, that must be Mr. Fox's house. Why, it is just as he described it to me. And as she approached the house, it was surrounded by this stone wall. And she began to walk through this iron gate and she noticed carved above the gateway with the words, be bold, be bold. <laughs> Why, that's a, that's a very odd greeting, thought Lady Mary. But thinking nothing of it, she, she passed on through. And she walked down this long pathway that led to the house. And when she got to that beautiful carved door, she, she looked above the door and carved in the heading above the door were the words, 
Be bold, be bold, but not too bold. Why, what an odd thing to write, thought Lady Mary. But thinking nothing of it, she, she grabbed the door knocker and let it slam, and it rang hollow throughout the house. Oh, that's right, Mr. Fox is away, but I'm sure he won't mind my, my taking a peek in. After all, he did invite me, so she tried the door and it was unlocked, and she opened wide the door and she stepped on into the house, and before her was a huge room, but it was odd, you see, because the room was completely empty, save for one chair to the side of this great stairway. And Lady Mary walked into that large room and she approached that stairway and she began to walk up and she felt like one of those grand ladies in one of the novels she would read. And she walked up the stairs and she looked on over to her left and there was a great big window that looked over the front lawn. And when Lady Mary reached the landing, she started walking down the hallway long, long hallway, and as she looked to her left and to her right, she saw that all the rooms had their doors open, and each of these rooms were as empty as the main room. Down at the end of the hall, there was one door that was closed. This is the door that interested Lady Mary. She approached it. She reached out, and as she reached out for the handle, she looked above the door and carved in this doorway with the words, be bold, be bold, but not too bold, lest your heart's blood should run cold. And Lady Mary opened the door and walked inside. And that room was dark. Oh, it was dark. And it took a while for Lady Mary to adjust her vision to that room. But once she did, she noticed that there were three great big vats or tubs in that room. Lady Mary looked into the first vat, and it was filled with a rather dark liquid. She put her finger into the vat, and she tasted it. and it tasted of human blood. She approached the second vat and she, she opened it and it was filled with human hair and, and skin and she approached the third vat and it was filled with, with human bones. And Lady Mary turned and she screamed and she ran from the room slamming the door behind her and she raced down that hallway and when she reached the stairs she began to run down the stairs as quickly as she could and as she did so she looked to her right and glanced out the window and saw Mr. Fox coming across the lawn. He was dragging this poor young girl across the lawn by her hair and she was kicking and screaming and begging for mercy. And he was approaching the front door. When Lady Mary reached the bottom of the stairs, she knew she did not have enough time to run out the front door. So instead, she hid behind the chair just to the side of the stairway. And just as Lady Mary ducked down behind that chair, Mr. Fox burst in through that door, still dragging that poor young girl behind her. And he dragged her across the floor and to the stairs and began to pull her up those stairs. And that poor young thing, she reached out with one of her hands and grasped onto the banister because she knew that if she reached the top of those stairs, she would never, ever come back down. And Mr. Fox cursed and screamed and, and pulled and yanked, but that girl would not let go. And then Mr. Fox, he drew back his coat and pulled out his sword and he raised it high and hacked off her hand. The sword came down, her hand flew up across the air and it landed right in the lap of Lady Mary, who was still hiding behind the chair. 
Mr. Fox, drag that girl to the top of the stairs and down the hall and into that dark room at the end. And when the door slammed, Lady Mary knew that that poor girl would never, ever come back out. And Lady Mary, she raced out from that house and she ran down the path and ran down through the woods and she did not stop running till she reached home. Well, another Sunday came and Mr. Fox once again came to call on Lady Mary. And on this Sunday afternoon, all four brothers were present in the garden, all sipping tea and eating cake. And Mr. Fox turned to Lady Mary and said, Why, Lady Mary, you seem troubled. What could be wrong? And Lady Mary looked at Mr. Fox and said, Why, yes, Mr. Fox, why, I am a bit troubled. You see, I had a very strange dream last night. Oh, and, and do tell me your dream. Dreams mean nothing, but we can while away the time and, and discuss what the meaning might be behind it. And Lady Mary began to tell her dream. Why, you see, Mr. Fox, I dreamt that I was walking through the woods, and eventually I came to this clearing, and there was this great big wall, and I walked through the gate, but... Above the gate, I saw the words, be bold, be bold, and thought, how strange a greeting. I walked through and came to this, this beautiful house, and I approached the door and carved above the doorway with the words, be bold, be bold, but not too bold. And then I dreamt that I entered this house and it was completely empty, save for one chair. And in this house there was a, a grand stairway and I began to climb and, and I reached a hallway. And I went to the, to the room at the end of the hallway and there was a door which was closed. And before entering I looked above the doorway and carved above this doorway were the words, be bold, be bold, but not too bold, lest your heart's blood should run cold. And then Mr. Fox replied, Why, Lady Mary, that is not so, and it was not so. But that's the way I dreamed it, Mr. Fox. And then I dreamt that I entered that room and it was dark, but eventually I could see three great big vats, and I placed my hand into the first vat and it was filled with blood and I looked into the second vat and it was filled with human hair and I looked into the third vat and it was filled with bones and Mr. Fox replied, well that is not so and it was not so but that's how I saw it in my dream, Mr. Fox and then I raced from that room and began to run down the stairs. And when I did, I looked out the great window and I saw you, Mr. Fox, dragging a girl behind you by her hair. And she was kicking and screaming. And then Mr. Fox replied, Lady Mary, that is not so, and it was not so. But that's what I saw in my dream. And you dragged that young girl into the house and dragged her up the stairs. And she reached out for the banister to hold on. And then, Mr. Fox, you drew your sword and you raised your sword and you hacked off her hand and dragged her down the hallway into that dark room. And then Mr. Fox rose from his place at the table and said, But it is not so and it was not so. And God forbid it should be so. And then Lady Mary stood. And she looked Mr. Fox right in the eye. And she said, Mr. Fox, 
It was so, and it is so, and here's her hand to prove it so. And then Lady Mary reached onto the table and took that young girl's hand and tossed it onto Mr. Fox's plate. And before he could run, her four brothers threw their swords and they grabbed Mr. Fox, took him round side the cottage, and they hacked him to pieces. And then they sat down to tea. Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox is a very old folktale collected by the Brothers Grimm. Now if you have just heard the story and you are getting ready to retire for the night and have a certain fear of bad dreams during the evening, let me share this little remedy with you. Once you have your shoes off and you're about to turn in, take your shoes and place them heel to heel with one toe facing under your bed and the other toe facing the opposite wall. And they say that you will have nothing but pleasant dreams all night long. Good evening.